All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode to the Beautiful Struggle Podcast, and this is episode number one twelve, uh, the first episode of twenty twenty two. Happy New Year! Whenever you're listening to this episode, and you guys already know, we're back with another phenomenal guest on the podcast. I'm super excited about this conversation and the guest we have on today. You know, I was scrolling on TikTok like a lot of us <laughs> do <laughs> one day, and I came across one of his videos, and it was really a compelling video, uh, really going through his his day in the life as a business owner and as an entrepreneur. Followed him on Instagram. Um, and just been checking out what he's been doing and he's been doing a lot of dope things, man. And um, I'm super excited about this conversation and a little bit about my guest. He is yes. the owner of a loungewear brand called Lounge Fit Brand. And he's also the owner of Huckster Media, a full service media agency in New York City. Everybody welcome Andre Smith. How you doing, bro? Yes, yes, yes. I'm doing great. How's it going? Man, I'm blessing, blessing well. Uh, we appreciate you jumping on the podcast. Uh, for the no problem, man. Yeah, for the people that don't know, we're recording a little bit later than usual, but it's all good. We had to get it in. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, how was your holidays? How was, you know what I'm saying, the New Year's um, and Christmas and whatnot? My holiday was good. It was great. Um, I actually, it was good, but I just got exposed to COVID. So mm -hmm. I'm in like isolation right now. But well, while I'm in isolation, I'm just getting as much work as I possibly can done because yeah, I'm yeah. just, I'm locked in right now. Locked in. That's but it was good. Um, man, I'm curious, what's, what made you start posting like your, your day in a life on TikTok? What made you start posting in TikTok at all? Um, we were just talking before uh, we hit record and you were telling us that you were on TikTok Live and um, you can explain that as well, what you were doing. But what made you even get into TikTok in that social media? Um, well, <clears throat> there's one reason why I got in, got in on TikTok and it was Gary V actually. Mm -hmm. I was on Instagram watching one of his videos and he was like, if you're not on TikTok right now, your business is not going anywhere. So mm -hmm. it was right about the time when I'm getting ready to start LoungeFit or actually we already started LoungeFit. And I'm like, I just spent like $6,000 of my savings to start this brand. How am I going to promote it? So mm -hmm. I hopped on TikTok. I'm like, yo, bro, you have nothing else to lose anymore. So go full at it. And I've just been making videos ever since, just hitting it hard. And we've just been growing like crazy on TikTok. It's amazing on there. No, I love that. And, you know, before, like I said, we hit record, we we're talking about, you know, the social media platforms and the internet in general has opened up so many opportunities for people to make money. And even if it's the side hustle, or whatever it is, it, there's definitely opportunities out there for you. Um, can you walk us through what you were just explaining to me about the, the, uh, the TikTok, the TikTok lives and whatnot? I didn't even know about this, to be honest. Yeah. It's crazy, but let us know. Yeah. So people in China have been doing this for like months and years now, by the way. And basically what it is, is if you have any type of business or brand or service, you can create like a shopping experience on TikTok live. So mm -hmm. I know, you know, QVC and the yeah, shopping yeah. channel and like places like that. They basically just sell their products on TV to customers mm -hmm. who are watching. So for us, small business owners, we don't have a big budget. So what we got to do is find the best way to make it work. So you go on TikTok, you put out all your product on a table and basically you just promote your product. So like, I'm gonna give you a quick awesome. example right now. I'm on TikTok live just now uh -huh. and we made $500 in one hour mm. just by promoting the product which is crazy. absolutely crazy Definitely. and bro all you guys have to do is put your product out on the table and just be like yo guys welcome to my tiktok shopping experience my name is andre i'm the owner of the lounge Street brand and this is some of the products i sell it's extremely comfortable you can wear it here to the gym traveling you just got to promote it and mm. people love to see that and they can connect mm. with you one-on-one. -on -one. And then a lot of people just buy. So it's pretty amazing on there, man. No, that's, I think that's phenomenal because that's a win-win for you because not only are you obviously promoting the brand, you're also forming a little community in there. You know, you're probably yeah. telling your story, you know, you're telling your background and how the, the apparel line was created and people are connecting with you. Not only yeah. that, but I'm assuming when people go on these these lives and whatnot, these shopping experiences, they're going on there to spend money. So it's like, oh, all yeah. I got to do is get the people in there. They're going to spend <clears throat> the money with you. So yeah, opportunities, crazy. Yeah, what's also crazy is, bro, 
some people don't even go on to to shop. Remember, you're just popping up on the for you page. True. Right. True. So they could just be scrolling and then they see this person like chatting it up with high energy and they're like, wait, he's kind of cool. Let me check it out. Yeah. And then they just randomly buy. So you don't people don't some people don't plan to buy. True. You just so happen to be scrolling and boom. Yeah. You're on the, wow. somebody's live. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. So man, with that being said, walk us through, I would love for you to walk us through your background. You know, you're from New York city, um, walk us through your background and how you got to this point of wanting to start a closing line. Yeah. So <clears throat> originally I'm not actually from New York city. Um, okay. originally, um, I lived in Jamaica pretty much a great portion of my life. And wow. I migrated from Jamaica to New York in 2007, 2008. And I've just been living here in New York ever since. And basically, bro, I moved to New York with nothing but one luggage. And that was it. Like my family, we didn't have much when we lived in Jamaica. So mm -hmm. I started like from the dirt, dirt bottom. Mm -hmm. So I went to college here, but I knew I wasn't into college. Um, I graduated though with my bachelor's degree in business. And I started a bunch of other businesses I've started, I can't even, I've started three clothing brands, three, mm -hmm. and they all failed for their own reasons. And um, cause I wasn't knowledgeable in the clothing business mm -hmm. back then. I was just trying to do it just to do it. So I made myself a promise not to start another brand until you have all the knowledge you need to be successful. Mm -hmm. So it just, it just so happened to be um, March, 2020 when the pandemic was just like hidden. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, everyone's in the house right now. And this is the perfect time for me to learn everything that I need to learn. So I'm coming up with business name and I had notes in my phone for years, by the way, from the other brands that I've started. So I knew I was gonna start another mm -hmm. brand. I just didn't know when I was gonna start that brand. So I go on my phone, I see the word lounge and I'm like, okay, I love loungewear. And then I scroll down a little bit more and I see the word fit in my notes. And I'm like, oh mm -hmm. shit. <laughs> That's the name. So I'm like, wait. So I called my cousin, my girlfriend. I called everyone. And I'm like, what do you think about this name? And they're like, wow, I actually like it. So from that day on, I was like, yep, this is it. This is the business. And I'm mm -hmm. rocking with it. So I stayed up all night. I did all the branding, the logo, everything in one night. And I just learned as much as I could during the, the pandemic. And I launched in, I think, August of September. It took me like six months to launch. And mm -hmm. Now we're here. Man, that's beautiful. So I'm curious. You said you launched three other clothing lines or two other? Three. Three. So yeah. walk us through some of the things that you learn from each clothing line. The fact that you are, are on your fourth one, which is incredible because most people after their first one would just give up. And that, that would yeah. be it. They throw in the towel. But you went through it four times, which is unbelievable. So what are some of the major things that you learned from launching the closing line, whether it's design, whether it's business, what what are some of the things that you learn? So a lot of people don't know, like the clothing industry, it's brutal. They don't care yeah. about how much money you have, like how much you know, it's brutal. So my first one, it pretty much failed because I had no knowledge. I was just mm -hmm. making shirts on Teespring and I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, let me just promote it. And it didn't really go anywhere. Um, the second brand, I still didn't know what I was doing. I just didn't have a vision, you know? So when you have no vision, you don't know like mm. where you're going. So I got some shirts on, I believe, I forgot what the site name is. I bought like a thousand and change dollars in shirt. Mm. The brand was called Rich Pursuit. I don't know why, but I guess I was just in pursuit of the riches and right. I never sold any. I probably sold like maybe two or three shirts and I'm like, yeah, this is not it. Second mm. brand. I actually was gaining some knowledge. Um, I knew that I wanted to manufacture my own stuff, but I just didn't have the funding to actually make that brand happen. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know what? Let me just not go crazy on it. Um, and then at that point, I knew you cannot start another brand until you know all about the clothing business, mm -hmm. manufacturing, um, accounting, branding, like how to make great designs. I was learning Adobe uh, Illustrator. I was learning as much as I could. And I knew all those tools that I've been learning was gonna come in handy one day. And one of the biggest things that everybody, I feel like small business owners need to know is Shopify. Mm -hmm. If you know how to work the back end of Shopify, 
you can go absolutely crazy on your store. Like you can make a lot of money if you learn how to properly, like properly use and set up a Shopify website. Mm, mm, I love that. That's crazy because um, actually I started a closing line back in, I think 2017, 2018. And similar to you, I didn't have a whole lot of knowledge about the closing line business. So I agree with you, it's super brutal. So uh, what actually ended up happening to me and why I had to shut it down. So back then I was in college and have too much money at all. So every dollar I was making was going right back into the business, right? Yeah, so yeah. I was doing well in the beginning, doing pretty solid. And then I placed an order on Alibaba through a manufacturer out there. And uh, long story short, I wired them the money and that yeah you know the rest the rest is history <laughs> they never i already know what... so but the crazy wow. thing is so I, it's crazy that i'm telling this story because the one piece that i cook that i took because i i ordered the the a sample right so they sent me a yeah, sample yeah. for like 80 bucks and i thought it was legit i'm like they sent me a sample uh i'm gonna go ahead and put in the order for you know 500 pieces or whatever it was um and they just ran off with the money so i was wow. down to like no money, just that was it, done. Just dead broke. Like, yeah, dead, dead broke. So <laughs> that sample is actually I'm wearing it right now. So no I kept way. It, yeah, perp. It was purpose closing. So I always kept this one piece because it was it's a reminder to me to like look. This is how far you came, and there's a lesson in that story. So that's amazing. I always kept this one piece, and I'm probably gonna get back into it one of these days. But um, yeah, I mean, that's, it's like, like you said, it's a brutal business, man. And you got to yeah. really know your stuff, especially when you're doing it by yourself, you got to know the ins and outs. You got to know what you're doing. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that's why like my hat's off to you because you went <clears> into it for the fourth time and which, which is amazing. So you go into it the fourth time and I'm curious, what was your, your inspiration for this time around? You know, it was the lounge, lounge where fit. Uh, yeah talk to us about you know your, your creative process and you going into that yeah so this one was a little different because at the time when I first started I, I was kind of into loungewear already um I used to go to like H&M and buy Nike and all their type of like sweatsuits and stuff mm -hmm. like that so I knew I was into loungewear and I knew that's where the vision was gonna mm -hmm. go um, buy. But one of the biggest faults that I found was you go to like these big brand stores and you buy a hoodie and you wash it and mm -hmm. it just looks washed out and ugly yeah. after the first mm -hmm. couple of washes. And it starts like peeling, which is like the little white balls that you see on mm -hmm. hoodies and stuff. And that's like one thing I hate. If I buy, if I spend $50 on a hoodie, this better be a good hoodie. I'm spending $50. Right. So my vision behind this brand was to make premium loungewear that people can have for years and years to come and that's actually like nice quality stuff so i pretty much searched up like the best fabrics to use for a sweatsuit and off the bat polyester wasn't gonna work polyester is basically plastic bottles in your hoodie so i'm like you know what that's not for me yeah. so i did some other research cotton like 100 percent cotton is a good um like mm -hmm. blend too, but it's very stiff. Yeah. Um, so then I found my perfect blend, which is like a cotton spandex mix and it's the perfect stretch and the mm -hmm. perfect softness. So once I figured out the vision, the material and all I needed to do was just make the design. So Pinterest was my best friend coming up with different mm -hmm. ideas, finding other brands like mine. And then I just took the time just like design simple, but like nice pieces. So one thing about the brand is it's a mixture of mostly loungewear, but it has some influence from like streetwear in there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. I combined the two to make like this premium lounge type style type of brand. No, I love that. And, you know, I always when people come up to me and ask about closing or starting a brand and whatnot, like I love the people that do unique things. Right. A yeah. lot of people want to start a clothing line and they just start with a shirt and some hats. Right. And it, yeah. which is cool. It's a good start. Or That's cool, but too. Yeah. It's nothing wrong with that. But I love when people step outside the box and they do something different like yourself, you know, yeah. loungewear. That's um, I love it. I, I love the designs as well. And I can definitely see the streetwear influence. I can see that you can wear it around to the gym and whatnot. So I definitely love that aspect as well. Um, is there any like 
in, any people that you draw inspiration from when it comes to designs, when it comes to clothing, fashion, or is this all things that just you uh, come up on the top of your head? No, there's a lot of people that I okay. get um, inspiration from. Virgil is number one, obviously. That's, I used to love team. Off-White. Like, yeah, RIP. I used to love Off-White, man. But as like, like I told you, I was an immigrant. I couldn't afford Off-White. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. super expensive. So um, I had him on my vision board, actually, like my mood board for the brand. I created one of those. And his designs was actually on there. And that's where I got a lot of the inspiration from. And then obviously you have other brands like Nike. Mm-hmm. Um, I was I was a big Adidas fan at one what point. What about Jerry Lorenzo? No. No? I didn't okay. even have him on my list. I had Kith on my list though. Okay. Like I had, I love how simple their stuff is and, mm-hmm. and it's cool. I, lo- I would love to be like Kith, you know? It's, it's a really mm-hmm. nice brand and they make like good quality stuff. Um, the Billionaires Boys, I used to check out their stuff all the time. Which other brand? Um, I, I don't even know. Like maybe what's that brand? The one hundreds? A hundredth, yeah. The hundreds, yeah, yeah. I yeah, used to hundreds. like look at their stuff too. So yeah. I gained a lot of inspiration from like a lot of other brands, but I had my style in my head already. Yeah. Yeah. I knew I loved that simple but street look. Yeah. So that I just pretty much blended those two. A little bit of each, you know. Yeah, and then with you being in New York, I mean, you just walk outside and you you see different looks all day, every day. You know, people oh, yeah. put together crazy things, right? Yeah, my, my first photo shoot was in Soho. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yo, you have to stand out right now and do like the best photo shoot that you can on a budget. So I got my cousins and her friends and my boy. I'm like, yo, let's go to Soho. And we pretty much just walked around Soho snapping pictures. And it was so funny because everyone on the block was like, yo, that's fire. Where'd you get that from? Like, yeah, that's mine. And we did the first (laughs) photo shoot in Soho. And it was so funny too, because there was this girl taking pictures in Soho and she saw me and she never said hi to me, by the way. And then I posted the video the same day on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh my gosh, I just saw you in Soho today. And I was like, wow, that is nuts. That's crazy, man, that's wild. Power of social media. So, yeah, I'm telling you. you know, it, you know, so a lot of people listening, they might be interested in starting a closing line. They might be interested in, you know, going down that path as well. You know, you always hear about people wanting to do this. I'm curious if you can walk us through a couple big points that people need to keep in mind when starting a closing line. Um, I would say one of the big things is when you're starting a clothing brand, you have to have a vision, right? Yeah. You can't just start a brand throw a name on it and be like yo this is my brand like what does that even mean to me or anybody that's starting a brand so one thing that i took pride in when i started lounge fit was you have to get the branding correctly right Mm. so by branding i'm talking about like the aesthetics of the brand feeling um i did like a mood board we did mock-ups like the colors that i use the typography that we use all types of stuff And I wanted my brand to be simple, but recognizable, you know? Mm. So if you're starting a brand today, if anybody's watching this that wants to start a brand today, please take the time to learn branding. Mm. You want to be different than every other clothing brand. So take the time Mm. to do branding and you'll see people actually resonate with your brand because they feel something when they, when they see it, you know? Right. And when you think of branding, what, what comes to your mind? Like what, what entails a, when it comes to branding, what, what does that entail for you? Because it's, it's kind of a broad word, right? People don't really know where to start with that word, but for you, what does that look like? You kind of mentioned it as well, like how it makes people feel and whatnot, but yeah. To, yeah. <clears throat> Basically branding is the vision and the feeling that somebody gets when they mm-hmm. see it. Right. So for instance, if you go on my Instagram page or my website, you go on it, it's very simple, it's very clean, it flows very well. Like you feel like you're in a safe space mm-hmm. when, when you see um, like my website. And one thing too, like I have amazing quality pictures. So I want people to actually feel the clothing mm-hmm. when they go on the website, like, wow, that looks super comfy. So branding basically for me is the overall feeling, the aesthetics, and what type of like vision you're conveying to your potential customers, you know? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Speaking of aesthetics and pictures and whatnot, 
um, you also have a creative agency, correct? Yes, yes, yes. I have a creative agency. Yeah. I, w- I would love for you to dive into that. Um, did it become, did it start before the closing line? Was it after? Walk us through that process as well. I'd love for you to speak on that because you do some incredible work over there as well. Yeah, that's funny because remember I told you we failed a bunch of other clothing brands before? Uh-huh. Well, one of the things I gained from failing those was web design on Shopify. There you right? go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So since I built, what, two, three websites before, and I'm like, okay, I think I got the hang of this. And I was always into social media and taking pictures mm-hmm. and photography and that type of stuff. So I'm like, why not start um, a social media agency? It actually started as like um, a marketing agency. That's what we mm-hmm. started at because everybody was doing it at the time. I'm like, right, all right, right, let me start it. And then it was before Launchpad, actually. I know you asked that. It was way before Launchpad, like two, three years before that. Yeah. And we started as a marketing agency. And then I'm like, you don't really know nothing about ads. Like, what are you doing, bro? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, I know I'm creative. So let's turn this into a creative agency and a web design agency. So yeah. turn it into that. And I'm now I'm building websites for all types of people. Yeah. And it's a great way to make money too, if you know how to build websites. Mm-hmm. Um, so I built a lot of websites and then we start doing like creative work. And now I think, I think I'm able to announce this. I'm actually working with TikTok the company to like create videos for their social media platforms like the small business tiktok telling you bro (laughs) (laughs) i'm telling you yeah what's up man yeah bro and i'm working with um some other companies too creating content for them and and the business that business has just grown on its own just because Mm. i started posting videos on tiktok Mm. so you know from from listening to you speak there's a couple things that stick out to me um number one is you just starting you just yeah taking that step and a lot of people have trouble with that you know they have things that they want to accomplish they want to do they want to create but they just can't take that first step and for you it's just like i'm just gonna walk out by faith man i'm gonna take that step and see what happens and now you're working with tiktok now um you're on tiktok live making 500 dollars in one hour which is unbelievable um and the other thing is uh man what was the other thing the other thing is is oh your lessons right so even yeah. though you you went through a lot of quote-unquote failures they definitely you failures something. yeah yeah they taught you something and it set you up for the next thing right if you would have never took those steps in the beginning to start those closing line and maybe like dabble into shopify um you wouldn't have learned the back end to then start the creative agency, right? So yeah, um, yeah. I, I love I love that you took your your failures and you turned them into lessons, and then you turned them into uh, pretty much your strength, right? You started yeah, a business yeah. with them, which is two. If you guys are listening, he's spitting game right now. <laughs> yeah, facts. I don't know if y'all listening, but man, I, I love those two points uh, from from you so far. Yeah. Yeah. So, bro, I'm telling you, you cannot be scared. Anybody watching this, you cannot be scared to start something, no matter what it is, because the one thing that eats me alive is regret. Mm. Like that eats me alive. So it's better that I fail and I know I tried than not knowing what if, you know, like you don't want that. Like when you're 60 years old, you're going to think about, damn, what if I started that clothing brand when I wanted to? Now you're 60. Mm. Yeah, you know, so definitely don't be scared to start anything. Failure, you're gonna every failure is a lesson learned. That's mm-hmm. how I look at it. So mm-hmm. I know you were just talking about how you wired your manufacturer like money and you lost mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. I have a similar story, right? Mm-hmm. So I was my second collection for Lounge Fit, and samples were amazing as always. Yeah. Everything is going good um, until I got a message saying hey, um, all your black hoodies came out two inches short or whatever. And I was pissed. Like, I was mm. so mad because they're supposed to ship the stuff to me today. And mm. you're going to tell me the day of shipment that it's all messed up. So here's what I said. And for everybody who's li- watching this right now, please listen to me and don't make the same mistake. Mm. I said, you need to fix it and ship it to me ASAP. They completely mm. skipped over fix it. And 
only took ship it ASAP. So they shipped, <laughs> I'm not kidding you, man. They shipped 200 pieces mm-hmm. of hoodies and joggers to me, two inches short. Two inches in clothing is mm-hmm. a lot. That's two inches. Mm-hmm. So I opened the inventory. I'm home. I'm like, these look like kids stuff. Like, what is this? So I put them on, man, and everything is short. And right there and then, I'm like, my mood just changed. I'm like, I just spent $5,000 on this. And what am I going to do? So I messaged them. They're like, oh, I'm so sorry. We missed communication. And then at that time, you know, it's China. They, you can't ship it back. Like, that's a couple no. thousand dollars, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? I'm already this far. Let me just like try to salvage this whole thing. So basically, luckily I had another color come in, which is the green. Um, Mm -hmm. We got the green and I had to give like, I don't know, maybe $2,000 in refunds to a bunch of my customers. And some customers swapped it out for the green. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I didn't want to deal with it because I have so much on my mind already because as a business owner, you have so many things going on. I'm like, you know what? Let me donate this to a charity. I found a charity, mm-hmm. Lupus. It was actually dear to my heart because my aunt has lupus. Mm-hmm. So I donated all the stuff to lupus. And we also got a tax write-off. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? It's still an L. Even if it's a tax write-off, you still mm-hmm. just lost $5,000. Yeah. 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 So did the tax write-off. And then I'm like, you know what? F it. Let's just move on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. And it took me two collections to recover. To, to recover. And I'm still recovering, by the way. I didn't even make it fully out of it yet. So, but that's a failure. And I learned a lesson from it. You have to know how to communicate with people. Mm -hmm. Communication is a big thing, whether it's customer service or speaking to your manufacturer or just talking to people in general. Communication is key in -hmm. business, you know? Yeah. And I think in addition to that, the ability to move on is is critical. Not letting it hold you down, not letting it hold you back. I mean, you can take that and apply it to anything, whether you're playing sports. They always say in basketball, if you miss a shot, um, continue playing. You got to have short throw memory. Another, yeah, just yeah, keep throw going. another one. Yeah, yeah throw another same one. for you like, too. Yeah. No, yeah. you failed then you're going to do it again because why not? <laughs> exactly, why not? So you always want to have, I mean, in, in business, you got to keep going forward. You got to take that next step for sure. So yeah. you mentioned that you got a lot going on. You know, you're a business owner. You're, you're running the closing line. You got the creative agency. Um, I see right behind your head, it says relax, the word relax. relax. <laughs> right? so, so I'm curious, man, uh, what are some of the ways as a business owner that you relax and you take care of your mental health? You see the sign? I don't actually follow it. Okay. I... <laughs> That's hey man, one thing. <laughs> I, I will say, you know, I do appreciate you being transparent to this whole conversation. <laughs> Yeah, man. That's one of the things that I don't do enough is relax. Cause like my mind is always just like, just like going and going and going. Um, So recently I've been trying to take, just like learn when to just take it easy. Cause Mm -hmm. one thing as business owners, content creators, if you create any type of content, I know you have a podcast, you have your social Mm -hmm. media, you will get burnt out. And when that burnout hits you, it's over. You're, you're done. You can't even think about making a podcast or a video or clothing or a business. So any business owners in here, content creators, learn when to put the phone down and just mm. be like, you know what? I need to take a break. Yes, we all love hustling, man. We all hustle. I'm a big hustler. Like I, I could go all night. Like I'm going to be up to like four, maybe three mm. o'clock tonight. So Sometimes we just got to learn when to like put the phone down, put the camera down and just like decompress, Mm -hmm. you know, and sleep. I don't get enough of that. But Mm -hmm. when I get a good night's sleep, I'm more productive than getting four hours of sleep. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I mean, I appreciate you, like I said, being transparent because um, at least you acknowledge it and acknowledge like some of the things and some of the steps that you're going to take to take care of yourself and really be a better entrepreneur, better business owner because it's definitely going to help you in the long run. Because I know, <clears throat> I'm not sure, how old are you, by the how old are I'm you 27. Way? I just turned 27 two months ago. I'm 27 as well. So, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I can only imagine you've been hustling and going at it probably since who knows when, like you're 18, 
early 20s. Way before that, man. I, I was in high school star and clothing brands. Okay, so it was before <laughs> that. So what I'm saying is you go on over 10 years, just going and going and going, man. So, and the reason why I bring that up, because I was definitely in that position where just hustling nonstop, trying to figure it out, trying to get to it. And yeah. you definitely do when, when that, when it hits, it hits hard, man. When you really got to just sit back and you got to take care of yourself. I remember a couple of times my health kind of got out of whack and I had exactly. to bring that back in, you know, yep. um, sleeping yep. and all that. And, um, but yeah, for sure. I, I love that you're acknowledging it and definitely, uh, would love to see you take care of yourself, man, for sure. Yep, yep. Definitely, man. Sleep is a big thing. Huge. Like you need rest, like you need to, I need to follow this sign more. Just <laughs> relax. Sometimes you just need to relax. Hustle is good, yeah. but sleep, it could it yeah. can bring you places. Absolutely. So uh, I'm curious, what was the biggest lesson you learned in 2021? It could be oh. a couple if you have a couple, but what's like the biggest thing you learned in 2021? The biggest lesson I learned, you spoke about it earlier in the podcast. The biggest yeah. lesson is the power of social media. When I tell you people don't understand it, man, it's insane. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you why, right? <clears throat> I was creating content for a year on TikTok, right? I didn't know about like that people are getting brand deals and like doing all mm -hmm. this types of stuff until one day I posted a video on my TikTok and this girl was like, you know, they're paying people thousands of dollars to post this. And I'm like, wait, what? I've been doing this for free for one year. Mm -hmm. So she was like, all right, email the company. So I emailed the company and they were like, yeah, we'll pay you a thousand dollars to make a couple of videos. And I was like, what? And then I got, I got kind of greedy. I'm not going to lie. I got kind of greedy and I counter offered at 1500 and they were like, yeah, that's fine. And I'm like, no way. <laughs> so we do the brand deal. I got $1,500. And then after that, it just mm -hmm. started rolling in. Next thing you know, for the month, I made $3,500 in brand deals mm. just for making videos. Mm -hmm. Like they're paying me, what, $100 for every 10 seconds. Mm. Could, like, think about you, that. You don't have to, but could you say the, the name of the company or not? You don't have to, though. I can't. I can't. No, say no, if, you go, if, if you go, <laughs> nah, if you go on my TikTok, you'll figure it out. You figure it out. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll if you go on my there. TikTok page, you'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, we'll leave but it. Yeah, it's there. amazing, nope. man. Like the power of TikTok is unreal. Social mm. media, unreal. So, okay, I'm curious. Uh, you own a creative agency. You're on TikTok. You got about a hundred thousand followers on there. Um, yeah. yeah, that's the platform that I'm lacking hard on. Like, I I'm solid. I think I'm pretty good on Instagram. I'm building on there, but I'm, I get an F in TikTok. What man. could go ahead i'm gonna let you talk stop right there just stop you're slacking like when i tell you you're slacking i would want you to delete instagram and hop on tiktok okay. not not for real though but like if you were even posting your podcast like little clips of your podcast on tiktok you could go absolutely crazy i watch podcasts on tiktok because they're quick mm. you know so if i can learn something really quick I'm watching it. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of brands, actually podcast companies or people on TikTok that are actually just posting like cut up clips of their podcast yeah. on TikTok and they're growing like crazy. I think so, what, I think what, um, cause I think I've done it before. Maybe <clears throat> I think there's a couple of things that go into it. Maybe the quality of the video and the type of content you're putting out. Cause if the quality yeah. is, is, is uh, janky, then I think people are just going to scroll right past it right but yeah yeah i have seen i have seen people put uh podcasting clips on tiktok and i mean i watch it myself so exactly that's that's interesting <clears throat> okay I'm let me tell you that. the little formula about tiktok right there's okay. three things that you need to be doing on tiktok entertaining mm. educating and following trends mm. if you can relate those three things like three things to your audience on tiktok you're gonna make it and you have to be consistent. Consistency win on TikTok every single time. So that means you can't just post today and then post again next week. Right, right. Come at least five times a week, at right. least. If you can do two, three times a day, you'll grow quicker. You know? So are you are you batching your content or are you um, creating every day? 
Um, initially, I was I was batching. I'm not gonna lie. Initially, I was batching, but after a while, you kind of just get tired of like just keep on creating. So now, once I create it, I just post it, and whenever the next idea comes, um, I post it. But I'm at the point where I can do that. Mm-hmm. Like if you're just starting out, you want to be you want to be batching and posting. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So what if the audience doesn't know what batching essentially is? is you creating a bunch of content. Let's just say on Sunday, you have three hours to create content. You create a bunch of content for the week and you're just posting it throughout the week. But um, Andre, it seems like you got into a point where you pretty much know what works. You pretty much know what the audience wants and you know how to use TikTok pretty well. So you just set it up, boom, knock out your idea and post it for the day. Yeah, that's pretty much post once a day now, maybe once every two days. Like after a certain point, you don't have to <clears throat> hustle as hard you know like once you hit 100k on tiktok like opportunities open for you mm-hmm. you know you figure the whole game out you know what to post and it just comes easier mm. love that i love that so hey, hey he gave me some game right there maybe he gave some game out there for y'all um i'm curious now so 2021 you learned about you learned the power of social media mm-hmm. now i'm curious you know we're about one week into 2022 how are you preparing for this year? Um, and, and, you know, what, what is your game plan for this year? You don't have to tell us specifically your goals, but like, what are your, what are some of the ways that you're preparing for this year? Well, my, I can tell you a couple of my goals. I need okay. to hit six figures. Actually, I want to hit seven figures this year, whether mm-hmm. it's through the brand, brand deals, the, mm-hmm. the agency, all of that. I need to hit six figures because last year, I feel like it was the year to figure out like how to actually make money on social media. Mm-hmm. And now this year is the year of like executing it. Like, you know mm-hmm. how to do it now. So just go do it and make the money. Um, and then another thing for me is, I didn't tell you guys this within the podcast, but everything and all the money that I've been making for the brand is all organic. Mm. We don't run ads. Mm. So now that I've gained a community organically, now I feel like I can get into the ad space and mm. 10X last year. Mm. Cause we have the, 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 the certification. Now we just need some new people to come in right. and then we just grow like crazy. You know, so that's, that's the plan for the new year, six figures and getting into the ad space. So when you do hit six figures, let me know. And we're going to clip this up and (laughs) I told you so. (laughs) (laughs) Nah, definitely. Give me six months. I gave myself six months to do it and I'm going to do it. For sure. For sure. Um, So I'm curious, like uh, what specifically, how are you preparing for, to do the, to, to accomplish those goals, right? What, what are some of the things you do? Is it you writing your goals down on a whiteboard or you writing your goals down every single day? Um, I'd love to give like practical advice for people listening out there that are going into their year. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> the thing about setting goals is like you can set a goal for one year and you know you gave yourself a year to accomplish those goals. So you might lack in between those mm-hmm. goals, right? So mm-hmm. what I did this year was Everything that I did last year, you have to do that in six months, Mm. right? So that means I got to do, my goal is to do less of the work, but actually accomplishing it in six months. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you Mm -hmm. do that by lessening your goal time. So if if now I want to make my goal to three months, but it's almost impossible to do that. Um, so I write down my goals in my, in my notes, actually, everything mm-hmm. is in my notes and I just, I actually probably looked at it maybe 20 times already. It's only been five days into new year. Mm-hmm. So I keep reminding myself like what your goals are and what your daily target is to make those goals happen. So if anybody's in here watching this, if you have knowledge on something, you can share that knowledge to somebody else in exchange for more knowledge. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is. I figured out the clothing game, right? I know how to make clothing. I know how to source it. I know how to design it. I know like where to send people to get different types of stuff. But what I don't know, like I said, is ads. So I met this guy on TikTok slash Instagram. And I was like, I'll put you on to the clothing game if you put me on to the ads game, right? Mm. So now I'm hopping on calls with him almost like once or twice a week. I'm teaching a bit teaching him about how to start a clothing brand. And he's teaching me Mm. about how to run Facebook and Instagram ads. Mm. So Mm. if you can share knowledge with people and gain knowledge in return, 
I'm telling you, it's a great way to learn in like today's market. Mm, that's powerful right there. Um, have you thought about running ads on TikTok? <sighs> I have, have you, but and what what have, what are your thoughts about that? And I'm okay, I, so what are you, what are your thoughts about running ads on TikTok and influencer marketing? All right, so here's what I think. <clears throat> I think the organic reach on TikTok is so high right now. Mm. So if you're a new brand, I wouldn't recommend running the ads, right? Mm. Cause then it's just pushing your stuff to people and you're spending money when you can just post it for free and gain the same amount of traffic. So I personally, I feel like I've built a solid following organically. Why ruin that to get paid people coming in, right? Mm. So. I don't know. I don't know if I believe in it yet yeah. for big brands. Yes. Cause they're big, but for right. smaller brands, not really. And as far as influencer marketing goes, I rather you send your products and pay 20 influencers to post it on their TikTok than you spending that money on some ads. Mm. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, just to transition a little bit, we can start wrapping this thing up pretty soon. Um, yeah. I'm sure you, you know, with you being on social media and whatnot, you're hearing a lot of talks about the metaverse. This is something that <laughs> we haven't spoken about on the TikTok. I mean, on the TikTok, on the, on podcast. the podcast. You got me, you got me talking <laughs> about TikTok now. Man. I'm doing my job then. I got to right. put everybody on to TikTok. Bro, you got me thinking about TikTok now. Um, <laughs> I'm curious, what, what are your thoughts about the metaverse? Um, are, you, are you thinking about it? Are you too focused on your closing line? I'm curious, you know, maybe are you trying to integrate it with the closing? What are your thoughts on it? So I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to pull up something on my phone right now. I don't know much about the metaverse. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't had the time to actually sit down yeah. and learn much about NFTs and all that mm -hmm. stuff. I want to get into it. And I know in the back of my head, I want to get into it so much that I wanted to create a lounge for an NFT. And I'm making like this lazy panda um nft and i don't know nothing about it yet but i knew i want to get into it so i made this i got somebody to design oh, wow. this um oh, wow. lazy panda for me and it's not yeah. done yet but yeah. that's I, in the back of my head i know i want to get into this space because i actually believe in mm -hmm. the whole project so i want to get into it but <laughs> me i don't really know much right now i don't know if you can maybe put the audience on i don't know uh okay so I mean, I've been diving into it a little bit and, you know, for the, for the first thing is I think we're extremely early into all this, like extremely, extremely early. Obviously yeah, there's going to be a lot of oppor opportunity for people to make money, but um, I feel like where we're at right now is I know, and I know we're both young, but like when web uh, 1.0 was first coming out in like 1995, 1996, it's like somebody back then predicting that Facebook <clears throat> was going to pop. It's like yeah, almost yeah. impossible, right? So I say that to say we're still super early and I don't know if anybody fully understands what the metaverse is and what it's going to be, right? Yeah. Right now, there's just a lot of waves and a lot of opportunities that are being made with the NFTs and artists making money. And that's kind of where we're at right now. But I think in the next five years, it's going to be something completely different. Um, that's just my opinion about it. Um, I'm pretty bullish i'm pretty high on this whole the whole web 3.0 like i i love yeah. the direction that we're going in um the other thing that i would love to keep in mind and i've also spoken to people about is um i'm big on mental health so when we're talking about people spending most of the time in a digital world and buying things digitally what is that going to do to our society and to people's mental health right that's the thing that's, that I'm, that's the thing i'm curious about because if somebody could be whoever they want and have whatever they want in the virtual world, why would they want to live in the physical world? Right? That's true. But like, look at it in the aspect where what if you can get mental health within the metaverse? So that's, there is somebody out there. I wish I can shout them out, but I forgot who it is. They, there is like, you know how you can buy a land on in the metaverse? Yeah. They, they have like a plot of land where you can go and get mental health um uh, uh different uh, uh i guess services and whatnot already so yeah. which is pretty interesting but that's just my take on it you know I, like i said i'm pretty bullish on this whole industry and where we're going um it's gonna be very interesting for sure yeah definitely i feel like 
I also don't want to miss out because if you think about it, yeah. Uber wasn't a thing. Remember when we first we were first on the internet? We were just playing games on right. Disney. Right. Like we're video calling right now. It's like crazy. that is crazy. We're streaming music online. We take our phone and we call a taxi. Yeah. Like, if you think about it, that is crazy. Yeah. No, and I, you know? I think I, I I do love what you're saying. You're saying you don't want to miss out. Uh, because when it comes to closing, I think there's going to be huge opportunities for that. You already see uh, Nike, they, I forgot the name of the company, but they bought this company that makes uh, digital closing. The yeah. Nike invested in that, or they actually bought the company. So it's already moving in that direction. I think um, Gucci just recently announced that they're coming out with an NFT as well. So my thing is for the people, this will be my last thing about this whole NFT, but for the people that are creating NFTs like yourself, I would love for people to have like a legit utility and use behind it. And use for That's it. like my only thing, man. Like I hate- That when makes people, sense though. Yeah, I hate when people like, you know, they're just trying to do it and to make money and they leave the consumer with like nothing, right? Like what is uh, this now? Like- wh- What is this? So I think yeah. the biggest thing, like one of the companies <clears throat> I like what they're doing is Adidas. Um, they released an NFT recently and, and if you have purchased an NFT, you get access to like, um, like exclusive merchandise and clothing and drops and whatnot, which I think is pretty cool. I think it's pretty valuable for the people that really are invested in Adidas. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely right about that. Now that you said that, that kind of made me backtrack. Like, why am I making it? You know, I yeah, have to yeah. almost have a purpose for making it now. You know. Yeah. So, I mean, with you, I think it'd be dope. Like if, if you were to buy this NFT, then I don't know, you get 30% off the next five drops or something like that. Or you get, you get like an exclusive uh, tracksuit colorway that only our NFT user has um, something like that, you know, something that's like a utility yeah, yeah. use or maybe, I you, think... or it Go could ahead. be, we're just brainstorming here, but it could be like, um, you know, you can get, you can, when you come out to New York city, we'll have lunch or something like that, or you'll, you'll have the behind the scenes to, you know, like what I, the creative process or you have input into the closing. I don't know, man. Like there's so many. No, that's bro. Like, I love that. Well, you're going to have to, when, once you're done with this, send it to me, please. Cause those are some good ideas. Yeah. So, I mean, there's so many different ways you can go with it, man. But um, I love that you're, it's, it's incredible that you're already thinking about it and creating and you're like, I don't really know too much about it, but I'm going to, again, Take that first step. Yeah, take the first step. Like like we said before, just make it happen because you don't want to, what if, you know? What if, yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, man, I mean, we spoke about a lot. I don't know if there's anything else you want to cover or dive into, but um, I definitely appreciate you jumping on this late. Yeah, no problem, man. One thing that I need everybody watching this, please, I am begging you, please get on any type of platform mostly TikTok, obviously, and to start creating content. Mm-hmm. Like if you mm-hmm. want to be within this content creation space, no matter how bad it is, no matter how not good you don't you think you are, please just create as much content as you can, push it out there. There's somebody out there in the world that's going to be able to relate to you and your content, you know? Mm-hmm. I love that. What I was going to say is I always have my guests leave the audience with one last gem. Um, and I think that's the gem right there. <laughs> yeah, I beat you attention. to it. <laughs> yeah, you beat me to it. You need to pay attention to TikTok. I love that, man. Um, where can people find you? Talk to them about the, the closing line and where they can they can purchase some of that. I love, like I said, I love the closing. Let them know where the people can get that. Yeah, so if anybody's interested in my story or the brand story, you can find me on loungefitbrand.com. All my social media for the brand is loungefitbrand on Instagram, TikTok, um, Twitter as well, YouTube. And my personal Instagram, if you just want to message me, we can chop it up. I love to talk to people. My personal Instagram is Andre Smith with three H's. So mm-hmm. definitely hit me up on those platforms and let's chop it up. Yep. And we're linking everything in the description of this podcast. And yes, with sir. that being said... Happy New Year's, y'all. We're back. I'm excited to be back and we'll catch you guys next week. Peace. All right. Peace.